Well, hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome to my kitchen table and to this uh, review of some Irish whiskey. We're just still ahead of St. Patrick's Day, and I uh, wanted to reach out and review a bottle that I've actually talked about and commented on, but I haven't done a review with you. So if you stay with me, we will talk about Tullamore Dew. This is their 12-year-old special reserve. Thanks for staying with me through the break. As I said, uh, you know, it's timely to think about Irish whiskey. We're just ahead of St. Patrick's Day. And, and so I looked on my shelf and I really only have about four or five bottles of Irish whiskey right now. All of them I've talked to you about except for um, this edition of Tullamore Dew. I have talked about the, their entrance expression um, a while back. And I think at the time I, I tasted it against the entrance Jameson and in my taste buds, I actually preferred Tullamore Dew, which is interesting because, you know, the, uh, the Dew stands for um, the person's name that was credited for starting this, Daniel E. Williams, back in 1829. Yeah, it's on the bottle, 1829. Uh, but the uh, Tullamore Distillery and Irish Whiskey Production actually ceased to be somewhere in the 1950s. So obviously a very old uh, distillery, lots of, of heritage. Um, certainly a champion of the triple distillation, but then it fell away and I think they sold the rights uh, Hopefully I'll get my history right, uh, but I think they sold the rights to uh, John Powers and Sons and so production moved to where they were moving a lot of Irish um, Production to the um, Cork distillery in, in Middleton or the Middleton distillery in Cork. That's right and uh, where a lot of great Irish whiskey is done. And so that's where Tullamore is coming out of. Now in uh, 2014, I believe, um, William Grant and Sons purchased the rights, or maybe they purchased it ahead of it, like somewhere around 2010. But in 2014, they started their own distillery. I think that's the key, back uh, just on the outscores of uh, Tullamore, and they're producing their own spirit. So that's fantastic that they, they've brought that history back to the community and are making their own spirit. This, of course, is a 12-year-old. It's 2020. Uh, clearly, this isn't uh, that liquid. This still has to be out of uh, Middleton. But a little bit about the whiskey itself. Um, it says right on the bottle. It's a, you know, it comes in a nice presentation, a nice uh, kind of nice box, and and a, and a fairly cool-looking bottle. It says right on the box that it is aged in uh, ex bourbon and ex oloroso sherry. Uh, it doesn't say, you know, if uh, the spirit is all recast or whether it has some spirit in uh, ex oloroso sherry and some spirit in ex bourbon and then they're blended. That much I can't say. It does mention that, I mean, it's clearly, this is clearly a blended Irish whiskey. So by that, I mean it has some um, uh, single pot, which is malted and unmalted barley uh, in copper pot. And then it has some malt it mentions and it also says some golden grain or something. So it has some grain whiskey in it. So it is definitely a blend of different whiskeys and it is uh, triple distilled as well, which tends to give lighter, um, more floral notes. That was a huge intro. I'm not sure why. Let's see what the whiskey's like itself. Ah, I find this nose nice in that it's got uh, some vanilla, some caramels that I'm getting from probably the ex-bourbon ex, uh, uh, casks, but there's a nice uh, floral, um, yeah, Oloroso note, but it's not super strong. It's not, it may not even be the first thing you catch. You might have to spend a little bit of time with it. So I definitely get some of those, some fruitier red notes. Yeah, juicy raisin. Edge of some dusty oak in there a little bit. <laughs> now, you can't see it, but behind the camera on the table, there's some milk chocolate for Easter that's coming soon. Might have influenced where I was about to say, which is maybe a little bit of a light chocolate, not a dark chocolate. But mostly light fruit, you know, really gentle fruit and uh, vanillas, a little bit of caramels. 
gentle. This is 40%. Sure, it's colored. I know it's gel filtered. Well, I don't know that, but again, I assume that because it's not saying otherwise. And at 40%, uh, for a whiskey, it's going to be a pleasing but relatively gentle nose. And see what it tastes like. Slanja. A gentle but expressive palette. This um, starts lighter fruits for me actually. It went a little off the red that I was getting in the nose and more toward a, a yellowing fruits of some kind, whatever that it would be. Maybe a light stone fruit, like a really light peach, not super sweet. Peach is very sweet for me, so maybe an apricot, but it's kind of a yellow stone fruits. And then um, quite strong vanilla. A little bit sweet there, like a like a sweet vanilla, sweet light honey, and um, then a gentle spicing. I think it's a wood spicing that I'm getting, so um, a bit of nutmeg. I think better try another sip. Hmm. And this time, a little more chocolate came through. So definitely a little chocolate, some light fruits in the palate, a little more red fruits in the nose, but they ease off pretty quick. Um, finish is a little bit oaky, not strong, but just a gentle oak. And moving more to that light honey, light fruit, light vanilla. It doesn't stay strong in the red Oloroso. So um, I recently talked about the Sexton, which, which is younger. I think it's probably around a four-year-old whiskey. This is a 12-year-old whiskey um, and it is very expressive with its Oloroso sherry notes. Just really strong. And then malt. This is certainly more complicated and I haven't heard a lot of people sing some praises around this box and I you know, I, I hunt around for deals, but I got this for a phenomenal deal. For a 12-year-old whiskey, you know, I, I picked up around 40 bucks. Now, I've seen it for as much as 60-some or whatever, and that's, that's a fair price to pay. However, I think this whiskey would have a broad appeal. In this case, what I mean is it is gentle, fairly relaxed, approachable. The nose has a bit of a balance between some of those vanillas, caramels. Oh, but there is a fruiting. There's clearly some... Uh, Oloroso cask influence. The palette, similar. It shifts. As I said, it goes kind of light or yellow or vanilla-y. Like it, it shifts even in the fruits that are presented. But I also get a little bit of cinnamon. Well, no, not cinnamon. A little bit of nutmeg and, and then a little bit of chocolate in there. And the finish is it's short. It's not a long finish, but it's a gentle relax. It's not astringent. It's not tannic. It's not bitter. This is actually one of my favorite relaxing Irish whiskeys right now. And, and I know Tullamore doesn't get a lot of love because it's kind of sourced, sort of. Now they do have their own distillery, but we're not drinking it yet. But I would actually say this, uh, this 12 year old, this is the special reserve. I'm trying to see if there's any other marker so you can find this exact release. Um, this is good stuff. It's for me, it's over four stars, which I haven't been drinking lately. I genuinely like it. It's it's pushing into the four and a half for me, but certainly over four stars. I hope you guys uh, are well set up to still have a great uh, St. Patrick's Day. It's a nice uh, way to lift our spirits and celebrate friends and family. I would be remiss to say, you know, I'm shooting this at a time when the world is trying to struggle with what does it mean to um, social distance, flatten the curve, all of those things that you hear. You know, uh, as a as a semi-public voice, I just want to, again, thank all of the frontline workers, all of the healthcare people that are um, working both in the planning and then in the frontline delivery. Uh, my sister's a nurse. Uh, she's working on COVID testing. And uh, I just certainly want to acknowledge all of that hard work and encourage all of you out there to just be sensible in what you're doing. Listen to the healthcare professionals so much quicker or, or, or farther ahead than talking heads like me or just posts that are blowing up on Facebook. I think we have some smart people in place, whether you're 
Uh, whatever country you're in, I think there are some fantastic caring people in healthcare. And if you listen to their advice, I bet we can slow this down and, uh, and we'll be talking about um, how uh, the human, uh, I don't want to say the human spirit, but how we've helped out our neighbor um, and, uh, and cared for each other. You guys take care. Music